morning. Uh, before I get started, I want to say I hope everyone's doing okay out there. This lesson is for my trig pre-calc class. I don't remember what lesson this is, but I'll put it in the uh, title of the, of the video. Well, uh, let's go ahead and go over our goals. We have three goals, two goals today, actually. Simplifying the difference quotient. So we're going to go a little bit farther now with the, the difference quotient problem. And we're going to go a little bit farther with the inverse problem. We're going to find inverses of polynomial and root functions, and we're going to verify those as well. So now that I'm satisfied that we've got the basics, now we can start adding a little bit more to these problems. Let me make sure the entire whiteboard is in the frame, and it is, okay. So let's go ahead and work on our first goal here. Our first goal is going to be to simplify the difference quotient. So you guys have done a wonderful job setting this up. So I'll set this up real quick. Um, this becomes 3x plus h minus 2 minus... 3x minus 2, and this is all over h. Okay. So this is, a, this is a, as far as we've gotten with this problem. Now I'd like us to simplify it. So let's just ignore the denominator for a minute, and we'll just deal with the numerator here. So this is going to now become 3x plus 3h minus 2. And we're going to pass this out minus 3x plus 2, okay? And we still have our h. So we can actually do some canceling here. 3x will cancel out that minus 3x. Minus 2 will cancel out the plus 2. And we're now left with just 3h over h. The h's are going to divide themselves out, and we're left with just 3. That is simplifying the difference quotient. Remember, the difference quotient uh, is a fancier version of slope. And this answer makes sense, because this line has a slope of 3, and the difference quotient gave us a value of 3. So that, that matches. All right, I'm going to check off the first goal. Okay. Um, I'm going to move on now to finding inverses of a polynomial and root functions, and we're going to talk about verifying. All right, so remember, um, when we are finding an inverse, what we have to do is we have to switch the x and the y. So I'm going to write this as x equals uh, y plus 2 plus 3. All right, and I want to isolate this y squared. Um, the whole number exponent makes this a polynomial function. Um, so I subtracted 3 to both sides, minus 3, minus 3, and we get x minus 3 is equal to y plus 2 squared. Okay, so we have to get rid of the square, and it's really easy to do. Um, we're going to get rid of the square by using a square root. And if I square root the right side, I have to square root the left side. And now we're left with the square root of x minus 3 is equal to y plus 2. And to isolate, we just subtract the 2 to both sides, and we get the square root of x minus 3 minus 2 is equal to my inverse function. All right, so now we're going to have the square root sides, right? Um, Still pretty easy to do, I think. Um, let's just verify one version of it. We'll, we'll plug in the uh, original, or we'll plug the inverse into the original, and uh, we'll watch it untie. Okay? So we'll plug the inverse into the original. F of F inverse. All right, so the original, instead of an X, I'm gonna write this entire thing, so it's, uh, it's equal to Parentheses, square root x minus three minus two. That's my new. That's my new x, and I'm going to add two to that, and I'm going to square it, and then I'm going to uh, add three to that. All right. So let's go. And I, I want to see steps. They don't all cancel at once. So following our orders of operations, now I'm left with. Parentheses, 
x minus 3 square root squared plus 3. So we saw right here that square roots and squares cancel each other out. Here I have a square root and here I have a square, so that's going to cancel each other out. So now I'm left with x minus 3 plus 3. That's not a very good 3. It's a single. Uh, these guys cancel out. And I verified that I do in fact have the inverse. So I found the inverse of a polynomial and I verified it. Um, this second version, uh, we're starting out with a square root problem. And again, to get rid of square roots, you square. So let's just go through this the process. Uh, I switched to the x and the y, so this becomes x equals the square root of y plus 4 plus 5. So I minus a 5 to both sides. And I'm left with x minus 5 equals the square root of y plus 4. Right? So we saw multiple times that squares and square roots cancel each other out. So what I'm going to do to get rid of that square root is I'm going to square this side, which means I also must square this side. So now we get uh, x minus 5 squared is equal to y plus 4. I subtract away the 4, and I get x minus 5 squared minus 4, and that's equal to my inverse. Um, I'm going to run out of whiteboard here, so I won't be able to, uh, to verify it, but uh, let me just go through in my head. I plug this into this, it's getting loud out here too. I plug this in, the 4's will cancel, then I'm left with a square and the square root, those cancel, and then I'm left with a minus 5 plus 5, that cancels, and I'm just left with my x. Um, so it appears to me that that's going to uh, solve it for me. So right now we're only going to deal with squares and square roots. We'll see shortly how to deal with cubes and cube roots and, and nth power and nth roots. But uh, this, is our, uh, this is our lesson for today. So again, I hope everyone's doing okay out there. Have a good day. Bye-bye.